Hello, Jams. To my returning subscribers, welcome back to my new subscribers. Hi, my name is Didem, and this is my channel where I vlog about me sewing and talk about life. Well, what's going on in my life, to be honest. It's February 21st of 2023, and I know this is late, but I'm gonna say it anyway. Happy Valentine's Day, and happy Valentine's Day. I hope you had a great month. Mine started out creepy, and it ended, well, until now, <laughs> the 21st. It's been a bumpy road. Um, I cried yesterday i cried on sunday and i don't know it feels like life is becoming a little bit of a struggle um i know nothing is new under the sun everyone's going through the same problems at different times um and that is why i tend to look at the bible a lot because it has answers to everything because people back then were going through the same struggles as we are going through now. The only difference is the era. We're in a technological area era and they weren't, but their technology was not their technology is was not as great as ours is now. But in the beginning of this month I was being stopped by a guy um i was driving from driving home from picking up my brother i mean for dropping off my brother at school on uh, i think it was a saturday um and my mom needed to go to work uh the guy literally saw me driving and he followed me but he couldn't i did not go i didn't want to go home because that's the dumbest mistake anyone could do. I know people will make mistakes, but like I would not want to do that to myself. So I'm driving home and I, he, he literally sees me and stares at me for a good minute. And I'm trying to listen to a podcast, but I'm like zoned out a little bit. Um, and then I hear a car beep, beeping their horn. And I'm, I look around like, who is beeping their horn? And I see that the light is green. But as soon as I turn, I see this guy literally staring out his window into my face. And he's supposed to be turning left. But when we made eye contact, I was just like, oh, snap. Okay, that's weird. And I just kept going. I see this man jump on the lane that I am on. I'm going straight. This man is supposed to be turning left. He turns in the lane that I'm on and heads straight right behind me. He follows me. We get to another stop sign into like a neighborhood. Not my neighborhood. <laughs> um, and he rolls down his window and I'm just minding my business looking forward. And he beeps his horn. And then I rolled down my window and he asks me, where am I from? I said, I'm from Nigeria. And he said, oh, I thought you were Nigerian or Ghanaian. You have the facial features. And I'm thinking in my head, boy, shut up. No, you did not. Get out of here. Like, what? And he was like, what is your name? I said it twice. I made sure that he couldn't hear me. Um, and then he said, can I have my, can I have your number? I said, I'm so sorry. I'm on the phone with my mom. Actually, I, I was really, oh, my mom called me and I was actually on the phone with my mom. And I hear a, the car beep, another car beep again. The lights green. I'm like, oh snap, okay, I gotta go. I drove off, wind, wind, up, my, wind up my window. Um, He's on the lane that is supposed to be turning left. He gets on the lane that's supposed, that I'm on, which is straight again. And then, he can't drive next to me because the lane becomes like one lane. I don't know if this this <laughs> is painting a picture in your head, but I'm trying. 
um, the straight lane that I'm on becomes one lane since it's about to go into like an actual neighborhood. Um, so he gets behind me, behind my car, and kept, keeps driving. And I'm talking to my mom, like, Mom, this guy is literally stalking me. I'm not trying to come home. I'm literally going to try to make all these turns, and I know you're going to be late to work. But this man is really stalking me, and I don't want him to know where we live. And my mom was, like, panicking. And she was like, okay, okay, I'll walk all the way up to the high, um, to the main road from our neighborhood. And I was just like, okay, cool. And I'm still trying to have a conversation and so that with my mom so that he could stop talking to me and just leave. But he doesn't. He drives he continues to drive all the way to to the neighborhood next to my neighborhood that my mom walked to. She literally walked from my neighborhood to the neighborhood next to us, but like on the highway, like the main road, like where all the cars are driving. I don't want to mention the route because I don't want people knowing where I live. Um, so like where all the cars are driving and I see my mom and I parked right on the side of the, the road and I made sure that the sky sees my mom. <laughs> And my mom says, once he saw me, I mean, saw my mom, he was like, wait, what? Oh, like his facial expression was like, oh, snap. Mind you, my mom works in law enforcement, so she's wearing her uniform. I have to take her to work. Um, he sees her and I pick her up and she gets into the car and I'm driving, I'm speeding. My mom tells me to slow down. Um, this guy literally drives around us and drives right past us as fast as possible. My mom told me that she thinks that he probably thought I was rich because of how young I look or that I was a drug dealer. And I was just like, but I'm not a drug dealer and this car is not even mine in the first place and i'm not rich yet so i don't know how that applicates to me and i told my my best friend and she was just like maybe he was a sex trafficker and i was just like true who knows he drove right away um so he's not gonna find he doesn't know where i live and i hope it keeps it stays like that i pray to god it stays like that but with that being said it really got me thinking that if he did get my number and we started talking, would he like me for me or just for the things that I have? And I'm just like, how many people in this world are just liking someone for the materials that they have and not for who the person is? My parents always told us that once you get married or once you start dating, well, mostly when you get married, you're not married to the person that has all the stuff because those stuff can like disappear. Like someone could become rich one day and become broke the next day. Someone could have a car one day and lose the car another day. Someone could look sexy, but after maybe a couple of years, our body starts to deteriorate, to be honest. So, will that person look sexy again if someone per poured ashes on them? I mean, like, pour, like, I don't know, like, oil on them that makes them burn and, like, mess up their skin and their beauty? Like, will you still love them? Like, you're we're not marrying material things, physically th physical things, but... Physical, physical beauty is great, but that's just an addition. We're mostly marrying the character. And the question is, will you be able to deal with someone's character for the rest of your life? That's what you're marrying and not what they have or how they look. It's their character and 
the kind of person that the fa- not only the character that you're marrying but also the meh the family that they come from and as life is going on like as I'm as I'm getting older, I've started to see love in a completely different way. When I was younger, I, this is Bible verse <laughs> that describes what love is. And before you click off <laughs> or start going in the comments and saying like she's just trying to push her religion religion on us, um, I'm not this is just who I am I tend to look at the Bible for everything like I said but when I was younger this is Bible verse that um that talks about love and I definitely know that everyone in this in this whole entire world follows this Bible verse it's just that we don't want to associate with the Bible associate it with the Bible but it came from the Bible And that Bible verse is 1 Corinthians 13, verses 4 to 8. And it says, Charity, which is love, suffereth long, and is kind. Charity envieth not. Charity vaunted not itself, or puffed up. Does not behave itself unseemly. Seeketh not her own is not easily provoked, neither, I mean, thinketh no evil. Rejoiceth not in iniquity, but rejoiceth in the truth. Beareth all things, believeth all things, hopeth all things, endureth all things. Charity, verse 8, Charity never faileth, but whether there be prophets, prophecies, they shall fail. Whether there be tongues, they shall cease. Whether there be knowledge, it shall vanish away. When I was younger, I would always think like, oh, that's great. <laughs> love, it doesn't, love is kind. Yeah. Love doesn't boast too much about itself. Love um doesn't like evil things. It's not, doesn't like sin. It likes to tell the truth. Um, cool. Okay. Whatever. That's love. Uh, just be kind to people and be there when they need you to be there. But as I'm getting older, I've noticed that love really is, in the Bible, it seems straight on. But when you put it to like in real life it's hard to do that because depending on the person we're talking to the friendships that we have um it's hard to express love to certain people and that really gets to think gets me thinking that who really does this apply to like in our relationships with people because when we are with with our friends we only show love by like oh talking to them or like being there when they need us to be there if they need help like be there ride or die and kind of the same thing with your significant other but with your significant other you show love physically by having sex with them you can't really have sex with your friends unless it's like a situation ship or something like like friends with benefits. But I feel like there's one love that everyone tends to forget. Actually, let me not generalize this. That I, throughout my life, always forgot about, and which is myself. I really, I, hmm, like I'm gonna cry, but it seems like I rarely ever love myself for the kind of person I am and the kind of family that I came from. In my family, um, 
we always strive to be the best at everything and that's not that's not bad at all but with that it kind of impacted on me that I don't really celebrate the little wins or the big wins in my life. I I look for what to do next instead of marinate, like, instead of processing the present. So like, if I get an A on a, for example, back at school, if I get an A on an exam, like, oh, great, I get an A what next um i never really sat down to process like oh snap i worked so hard to get this a um because it's not easy for everyone to get an a um and then whenever i got a c or a d in my classes well i never really get a d i've only gotten a d one time <laughs> But whenever I got like C's in my classes, like I always thought that I was stupid, but I never gave myself grace to see that. No, you tried your best with all the things that was going on. You tried your best to get to where you need to be. And be glad that you got the C because that shows that at least you tried. If you got in a D, you definitely know that you weren't working as hard as you you wanted to because you definitely could have done better. So getting C's was very difficult for me. After a while I just started to accept that like I'm not I'm no longer gonna be getting those A's like I used to get when I was younger because I couldn't, I couldn't handle what was going on and there wasn't really much, no one I could really talk to at those moments to go through my thought process and everything that I was going through, but I never looked at the little wins and no shades to my parents, but I love them so much, but whenever I tell them what I've accomplished, <clears throat> It seems like all they see is a negative part of it. Um, for example, I went to a craft fair last, I think it was last week. Um, my dad was standing at the door just to hear what happened. But like, mind you, he really does that. He always waits for me to come to him. Um, but he was literally standing at the door. I think he was already in the kitchen. <laughs> But he just heard me park and open the door. He was standing at the door and he asked me how to go. And I was just like, it went well. I think it went well. Like, I know it probably went well for, for the amount of people that went to that event. I was like, I, pretty, I did pretty good. Like, I'm proud of myself. I got to meet new people. I got to um, get people to sign up on my email list. And for the past six months, not even six months, I feel like it was eight months, it was hard for me to get people to get on my email list. I got seven people on my email list and I was just like, what? I was so happy. But I told my dad, yeah, it went well. I'm happy. Um, I think I did pretty good. And then he asked me how much did I make from it and how much did I sell from, like sell, sold. And I told him, like, I sold one bag, I sold a couple scrunchies, and he was just like, do your bags even sell? Do people even buy it? Like, people do buy my bags, but I know that I'm not going to be making thousands of dollars within every craft fair. But, like you said, it really did hurt, because it's just like, it didn't seem like it was new it was just like oh okay it's time for you to quit and to people it's probably like oh that's not what he's saying but like that's how it is in my head because my dad is very like i don't know how to explain i don't know how to ex describe my dad to people <laughs> um 
Like, I will celebrate for, like, two seconds and just keep, move on to the next thing. I don't marinate, like, I don't, I need to stop saying marinate. I don't sit down to process what is going on or what I accomplished or what I've achieved. It's just going to be, oh, woo, okay, move on. Um... That is one way that I don't I feel like that was a little long and it was kind of all over the place but that's one thing that I I think I I tend to do even for my birthday like whenever people celebrate my birth like whenever they sing happy birthday to me I just make a like oh, okay whatever okay I know a lot of people probably do the same thing but like I I I tend to do nothing on my birthday because like it's like what's the point of celebrating it's it's just it's just a birthday and i i don't know like what does it mean to like suffer long <laughs> like long suffering like i go through life with so much in my head that the only way i could express it is through paper and i definitely plan on seeing a therapist anytime soon i don't know what long suffering is to myself i like i said i'm not kind to myself i tend to beat myself up for everything every failure that i make or every single mistake that i make i that's not me <laughs> I, I i try i'm trying right now to be kind to myself so like if i fail it's okay don't be too hard on yourself learn from that little mistake and keep it pushing i really do like when people tell me the truth i like it when these people tell me the truth but i don't tell myself the truth and i think that that is a problem because i only see see things through my eyes and not through the truth not through reality and i am gonna try to change that but i i don't know how so that's why i said i'll probably go to therapy i well eventually this year um i don't know like i feel like now things are gonna just be scattered <laughs> But yeah, um, I just need to learn how to express love to myself, not sexually, but emotionally and mentally, um, know that I can get through things. I need to be my own best friend like i should learn how to stop saying um mean things to myself when that's just an opinion another way that i need to learn how to stop i love myself is by taking actually good care of myself eating right reading more going for walks try to communicate with people and actually go to their therapy to talk about what i've gone through but i guess that's all i have to say for now i know i left this on a on an awkward spot <laughs> but i don't know this love thing is kind of hard to to express and to show. No wonder it's kind of hard. Sometimes it's kind of hard to understand God because God is love. Until and like until we get to understand what love really is, we're not really going to understand who God is. Because in the Bible, it also says that we should love our neighbors as ourselves. So, like, the way we treat others is the way we treat ourselves. And I feel like that's kind of hard to, to explain because, like, 
we may treat people well I may treat people with kindness and be there for others but I'm it feels like I'm not kind and I'm not being there for myself and I, and I think that's the reason that I have that I had been crying for three four days I think <laughs> because I'm always looking I've always been taking care of other people but I'm at this age where I need to start to take care of myself and I don't know how to do that so I guess in this chapter of my life this is what I need to learn how to do but because they always say that if you can love yourself when you're alone like without no no one around you then you could also love yourself when you are around people. Um, most times when I'm around people, I still feel lonely. And when I'm home by myself, I'm dancing around, watching movies, working on my business, planning what's going to happen next. But I don't really sit down to question myself like if I'm actually okay because sometimes the silence or the thoughts are scary and I can see why people kind of lost it in 2020 because we couldn't really be there for ourselves and I don't mean self-care as in like buy this makeup, buy this, I don't know, like face masks. Like all those are great, but they're all material things. We're not really trying to look at our, our, our hearts and our minds. I'm going to quote another Bible verse. Proverbs chapter 4 verse 23. Keep thy heart in all diligence. For out of it all, for out of it are the issues of life. So like, I don't think we like to face the music of what our minds and our hearts is going through. We try to use material things to cover up how we're feeling. Use material things to distract us somehow from what we are actually going through. Um, we're not going to have enough time to actually spend time with ourselves unless we make time. Just like we make time for others. But that's all I have to say. And this fabric that I'm wearing at the end of this <laughs> of this video is my least favorite fabric. But that's why it's a loungewear. I'm going to wear it at home. Have a great day. Have a great week. Have a good night. I don't know when you listen to this. The thing I will leave is just have a conversation with yourself. Sit down in silence. Write down your thoughts. Talk to someone. Um, yeah. Bye.